Gas development and utilization should be a national priority to stimulate economic growth, further improve Nigeria's energy mix, drive investments, and provide the much needed jobs for our citizens in the country. Our major objective for gas sector is to transform Nigeria into an industrialized nation whose gas playing a major role, and we demonstrated this through enhanced, accelerated gas revolution. It is my privilege and honor to now launch the decade of gas agenda and to declare this summit open. I wish you fruitful deliberations. Thank you, and God bless us all. And that was President Muhammadu Buhari launching an ambitious gas plan aimed at lifting Nigeria's economy and driving industrialization within 10 years. As you heard the president say, the commodity has the potential to diversify Nigeria's economy. A petroleum engineer with three decades of experience in the oil and gas industry, Alex Nain, is uh, joining us on the show from Wari in Delta State. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning to you, sir. Yeah. The, 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 the industry, the, the way it is now, there is absolute need for caution. All right, uh, hold on. Uh, hold on, sir. Let, let's uh, kickstart kick start officially. Welcome once again. Thanks for joining us on the show this morning. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so mm -hmm. now let's get into the conversation. It, it has been described as ambitious you know some have even also uh, you know spoken about the 10-year plan seeing that this government is going you know um, out in the next two years um, would you describe it also as ambitious do you think you know that this is something that is achievable seeing the way that our oil and gas industry is currently structured well it's it's, it's achievable but my concern is we always talk and talk and talk and nothing happens because this gas thing they are coming up with is nothing new. So I look at it like a flu. If they are really ready to do these things, it's doable. But over the years, over a period of 30 years now, it is the same yo-yo thing. So I don't have confidence. I don't have confidence in what we are saying, because we've said this in over and over, from Lukman time till now. So it's talk, talk, talk. Sometimes the advice is to rake in money. Unnecessary thing. So it, it, it's a pity. What we are talking now is something that we said years back, over and over. But it's like a gimmick. Look at the, the Imaginal Field Awards. Gimmicks all over the place. This is not how the industry runs. And this is the problem when you have a square peg in a round hole. People just take position, say things, they don't even understand the, the mechanism. The gas thing has been on for years. So this is another game plan. I don't know how effective because the system does not work right because you have round peg in square holes and that has been our problem from the beginning to the end after i retired down some few other people we have been in the uu state so i'm looking at this as another fluke thank you all right mr nay yes nigeria is blessed with so much natural resources natural minerals we have gas oil gold many things that you know other parts of the world do not have but since oil was discovered in Bayelsa in 1956, it seems, you know, we discovered just how much money we could make from export, and that just became our focus. There's been so much talk about diversifying Nigeria's economy base, but there's gas right here. Nigeria is the seventh, or is the country with the seventh largest gas reserves in the world. But why do you think we've not gotten to a point where we, where we effectively use gas, like another part of the country, for transportation, in the industrial sector, for electricity, and other plants? What's stopping us from making gas and mainstream? Well, well, gas, gas from 79, I came back to this country in 79, flying from Lagos to Wari, coming to see my people, I saw 
gas all over the place. In the U.S., I supervise drilling of gas for utility. So coming here and seeing the gas being flared, I was, I was moved. So by 1980, I took it upon myself and Gulf then agreed with people like uh, Gibbard Ground, uh, Mr. Kik Pelu, we worked to see on how to utilize gas. The report is still there. It is the result of that that made the government to give penalty to oil companies for flaring gas, five cents per MCF or so. So this idea that they have gas or whatever, we've always known that long ago. With all the gas we have by now, based on that 1980 report, till now, there should be no reason why there should be no electricity all over Nigeria because the gas we have is enough to leave the place. So government upon government come up and electricity is still a problem. Meanwhile, you are flaring gas. There are so many things that gas could be used for. We knew this since 1980. Go and check the report. We've said it over and over. So saying that Nigeria has so much gas, we knew that long way back 1980. So okay, the so point you... is, are we really serious to using it? Yes. Read through, you see, from stage to stage in the history of the industry, it's like an oscilloscope gas. Somebody will talk about it, capture some money, they move on. So the question is, is the government really ready to do the need for, to utilize this gas, or is it just the usual talk, talk from 1980 to now? Well, um, but you cannot... Follow... Yeah, do it second. right when you have the wrong people in the block. All right, and, and I would like us we to, have to speak more about that. We have to understand that the oil industry is not a political place. As right. long as the government makes it a political place, they will not get the benefit of what the industry should be. I would like us to speak a little bit more about that. Uh, former President Goodluck Jonathan had also <laughs> spoken about investments in Nigeria's gas sector. I remember uh, the... Obiaruku, I believe that's what it's called, uh, uh, plan back then, you know, billions of dollars. Uh, not very much was achieved through it. Um, share a little bit more of what you described as square hells in, uh, square uh, pegs Thanks. in round holes, um, you know, with the current plan and with, the, you know, the Nigerian government as it is. Uh, the current, you know, president uh, has said that 2020 is the year of gas. That's what it was described as. So what would you say are, you know, where we have the biggest lapses in our structure that might make this, you know, on, you know, imaginable to, of course, uh, to achieve? We have enough people to handle whatever. The, the, the Nigerian manpower within the oil industry is enormous. The ability to harness the right people to do the job, that's our problem. And political agencies in the country just don't make it happen. So you go out and get your cronies and put them in place, then you don't get results and you will never get results. Talk from here till tomorrow. There are people who know this business. If the government is real and they are sincere, let them change their structure as regards putting people into position within the oil industry. If they do it right, you get it. There are thousands and one people all over the place. That is the main problem. The so, so, corruption, the political agencies of not knowing value for particular things is a problem. So, so your, you, you think our biggest challenge really is the capabilities of the persons handling those sectors currently? Yes. We, don't, we, we have competent people, but when it comes to putting people there, they put their cronies who are just you you. So you come up with ideas, and those ideas cannot fly. Hmm. We have a serious problem. We all know that. You, that you, is the decay in the country. You mentioned something earlier about gas flaring. Why is hmm. gas flared in Nigeria, and what are the you know, side effects, the negatives of this activity? Well, gas in, in Nigeria, like I said, is a long-standing thing. We came up with ideas because of future generation. The gas you flare reinject. This was 1980. We are talking of 2021 now. So that in the future you can get it to use. Those ones went off. 
oh, we will do this with the gas, we'll do that. Look at all the gas projects we've done. Look at the cost. The cost, they are almost doubled because of corruption and inefficient people in places who don't know their right from their left. The fundamental problem we have is the federal government has to wake up and look for competent Nigerians, which are all over the place, both Nigeria here and outside, to handle this industry for them. As long as they embark on this yo-yo behavior, they will just talk and talk, use it to grab money. Next man comes in, he comes up with his idea. There's nothing new in what you're saying. Everybody knew very well that that is the only way to go. Okay. But just quickly, the share. drive to get it done is not going to be there as long as it's business as usual. I'm, I'm asking this because we know that in other countries, they are, you know, instituting laws that prevent gas flaring. But we continue to see this in Nigeria. So I want you to help us understand what are the, you know, effects of this activity to, for the Nigerian economy as well as our environment? Well, flare, flaring gas, to me, in this country, is a criminal thing which is being perpetuated by government. If government is stressed about it, by now we won't see any flare around. I'm here in the country home. All the buildings around me here, around Udu, they are all black because of the suit coming from Otorogu here. All the trees around me here, they are not green, they are blackish. So what does that mean? It means we are inhaling this blackish air into our system. There are so many problems that goes with it. Health. You see people dying, this one did, this one coughing, and these are all part of it. But that is something we can harness and give people electricity. Look at all the places here. Two years, five years, no light. Meanwhile, you are flaring gas behind them. It's criminal. I think if we want to do it right, we can do it right. But as long as we embark on this yo-yo pattern of putting people in place, we will not get there. Oh, the government has to think about it and see how they change that scenario. There's an but, article uh, that uh, speaks about uh, how much we lose. It says uh, the Nigerian government fled 225 billion standard cubic feet of gas between January and July 2020, and the uh, monetary value of that is about $787 million, almost 300 billion naira that has uh, been you know, lost you know, through gas flaring in just uh, six months of uh, 2020. Uh, there is also, you know, one of the things that was, was mentioned is the petroleum industry bill. The National Assembly has made promises about signing, you know, that bill by April. Do you think that might, you know, bring some positives into, you know, this uh, conversation concerning uh, proper utilization of gas in Nigeria? Well, the PIB, all these things you are mentioning, Lukman died how many years ago? Maybe since 1999, all these things we were talked about. Lukman, myself, and several others came up with original PIB. The SPE, NAPE, everybody put in their head. 1999, 2000, we're still here talking about PIB, making the document like a you, this one come and see whatever. The fundamental problem we have is what I've told you people. In civilized country, when you have issues, you close your eyes to who comes from where. You don't care whether Igbo, Yoruba, the people who can get it done for the nation. That's what you look for. But this yo yo that is going on in terms of positions and all that, you can never. Never. All these things we are talking will be vanity unless we cor correct that situation. That is the fundamental thing. The PIB, all these things you're saying, long. Luguma died years back. But before he died, we've been on. Look at all the things happening. It is a disgrace that Nigeria, with all the potentials of engineers and geologists, capable people, we are still fronting your use to run our affairs in the oil industry. Then you expect results. You don't give what you don't have. There's no way you can give what you don't have. That is our problem. 
we have to forget about quarter, who, and what else. If the 10 capable human beings to run the industry are for, by the same parents, give it to them. This is not selling of Gary. So one, one is just sick and tired of this nonsense over the years. 1979 till now, you see how many years I've been here. And I've seen the industry through. We walk outside the U.S., come, we've seen it all over. But the major problem in this country is the yo-yo appointment to make people feel happy where they can get the education. It is also your salary you paid should be enough for you to, people are well paid to do whatever. So you can't pick yo-yo to put there. What do they want? How to make money? So At I, the I, end of the day, so a billion spent, so a billion spent, you will not see anything. So that is the Nigerian story. Sir, I need I need us to be clear. I, I, are you you know making these statements you know maybe with regards to the current GMD Melekiari and of course uh, Timmy Perez Silva, uh, who is uh, the current Minister of State for Petroleum? Are you saying that you know them being in those positions, they don't have the competence and the capabilities to achieve these plans that President Muhammad Buhari is stating? Or are you, you know, saying that it is, you know, all, it trickles down all the way to the downstream sector and everyone who is in uh, these positions, in the NNPC, in the NN, uh, NLNG, uh, PPMC, and all those bodies? Is, is that what you're describing here? LNNG, the structure in LNG, LNNG is different. That's why it's making money. The structure in LNNG is different. That's why it's making money. All this bunch of things in NNPC and all this, just how do you have a refinery? A refinery that nobody is working. There are sending people overseas to go and train. Do you need somebody to tell you that that is the wrong thing to do? What are you sending the people to go and train them for? The refinery is there. Look at the billions of Naira going into whatever. And the thing is on. If you are a businessman, will you run a thing like that? Because it's government. They put their people in there. Let's pay salary. For some that is it's supposed to be a business venture. I don't care who is there. I'm not talking about the present group MD or this or that. This has been a consistent thing in this country. And it's time for us to wake up and change this scenario. We can sit down and look through the, the array of human beings we have from the university to the industry, everywhere in the world, you get statistics. And you can get capable people, real people, that are ready to serve, not thieves. Okay. Then you get your job done. All right. Yes. But we, we know that we've had challenges. We've had challenges in the past. You know, you've been mentioning suggestions that were put forth, forward as not far back as the, as the 1980s. But... Now we see the president, you know, at this Nigeria International Petroleum Summit 2021, promising to utilize gas resources to uplift the economy in 10 years. Are you not optimistic that maybe the president would do something different from previous administrations? What I'm saying is it is a good idea. Good ideas in paper, implementation, who, shall, who are the people that are going to carry out these processes? Is the government ready to buy the bullet and change the story I've been saying? As long as they are not ready to, then it is still a fluke. It is still a fluke as long as they are not ready to change the pattern. That pattern, I said, I came back 79 till now, and I've been seeing this thing, and I'm all over the place whether the U.S., wherever, in different capacities. I've seen this thing over and over. You are mentioning LNG. Look at the structure of LNG. LNG is not a government-owned outfit. It is a combination, and the structure there makes it tough for the usual eating and stealing of money. So they must look for skillful people to run the organization there because it's not Nigerian government property only. Even the administration... They are like part of it, but not right in the heart of it. All right. Mm. You, you, you have people who sit down there, get this, that. They bring budget to you. You don't have competent people to scrutinize budgets of your partners. Okay. All right. And once Alexander, the price is right, nay. you find any paper. All right, uh, Mr. Alexander Ney, thank you so much for yes. speaking with us this morning. Yes, thank you. And thanks for your time.
It's, it's a pleasure, you know. I wish, I wish, I wish I, I was there to appear on the screen, but at the same time, I've been saying this for years now, we need to wake up and do the right thing. This is not an industry where they say, Gary. So we should not treat it politically or otherwise. You have to be thorough to do the needful to achieve the, the goal. The goal is okay, but right. the things to eat, to eat, that's where I have my problem. And I think if they change the gear, we will be able to. But as long as they're doing what they're doing, man, no man, forget it. Mm. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's just hope Thank the president will come through, fulfill his promise to us for the next 10 years. Have a great day, sir. Thank you very much. All right, the, let's uh, uh, take a break here. I will be right back with uh, a very interesting and trending matter.